go back to Chicago Bulls. And players, people don't understand. Players watch players. Let's start with Derrick Rose. Derrick Rose was first injury. Went down, done, came back, mm-hmm. got injured again, got injured again, got injured again. Derrick Rose can never stay healthy. Mm-hmm. Okay. So at what point do you start looking at the Chicago medical staff? Like, why is this dude get, keep getting hurt? And he's an all-star. Mm-hmm. He's an MVP. You follow Derrick Rose's situation. I mean, he never got healthy in Chicago. And he, you know, he, he really never been healthy anywhere. But the impetus of this started here. Remember when Lou Aldain got sick and they told him he had the flu? And mm-hmm. he wound, they tried to get him back on the, out there on the court to play, and he had to shut it down. They mm-hmm. found he damn near died because of the spinal tap. Same medical exactly. staff that dealt with Derrick Rose. Get back a couple of years after that. Joel Kim Noah separated soldier, shoulder. Sent him back out there. Four games later, he's back out with the exact same industry. I mean, injury. Three mm-hmm. diagnoses. Three all-star players, same organization. Finally, the Bulls decided to fire him. But here goes the mistrust, right? <laughs> mm-hmm. That's where the mistrust starts. So there's always been a conversation around the NBA about how the Bulls, mis- the mistrust in dealing with you know, teams and their medical staff and trying to get players back on the court. That's always been there, but the Bulls personified that, and everybody's tried to take notice, like, oh, what the hell is this? You know, so when you're Kawhi Leonard and you watch an organization that Michael Jordan played for, this, that, and the other, and you watch what they did with three players, and finally the team decided to fire the entire medical staff, that's in the back of your mind. Then you watch Isaiah Thomas come up, you know, and lose $100 million. Your best bet is like, I'm getting a second opinion on this. Not only am I losing a million dollars, but I've watched a team that has been faithful to players, and I've seen what a team can do. I'm not saying this is San Antonio, but I'm watch, I've watched one team break down their off an MVP player, you know, and, and a two-time all-star, a defensive player. I've watched them do this, and these people are very aware of this. So you've got two factors that, co- that are in Kawhi Leonard's mind that he's making sure don't affect his career. Because guess what? Derrick Rose has never been the same. Luau Dang has never been the same. Joel Kim Noah has never been the same. And guess what? Isaiah Thomas has never been the same. So all of that is what Kawhi is building his decision on. Mm-hmm. Okay? Now, mm-hmm. you bring that to the table and you bring it to an organization that has a problem with you going to get a second opinion. Like, what, you don't trust our people? Nah. Kawhi's problem is that he didn't break it down the same way I just broke it down to you. Now, of course, they can say, well, that's not how we operate. I, I don't, I'm just telling you what I see. I'm trying to tell you what I'm trying to avoid. This is nothing against you all. I'm looking at history. Because you know what? Sometimes if you're a basketball player and this is what you do for a living, a sense of history will put everything in perspective for them. And if they don't respect mm-hmm. it, then you don't mess with them in the beginning. So if Kawhi and the people broke it down the same way I just broke it down to you, then it's on San Antonio because guess what? If the news comes out that Kawhi Leonard sat into a meeting with the San Antonio Spurs and he broke down the situation exactly as I broke it down to you, who's going to look like the bad guy? The San Antonio exactly. Spurs. Exactly. But Kawhi doesn't communicate like that. He's more quiet. He's more reserved. He's said, so that doesn't come out. But trust me, it's in his mind he's watching this happen. And that's why his people are like, nah. We've seen this happen before. We're not going down that same rabbit hole. We're not going to sabotage my man's career because we've watched this happen a few times, and we've seen the end result, and it ain't good. So we're going to take matters in our own hands. Nothing against San Antonio, but you know what I'm saying? And Mm -hmm. I'm San Antonio, I understand them feeling like, hey, that's them. That ain't us. That's them. Yeah. And without having that dialogue and that conversation, I can see where it came from. So I gave you that long-ass answer to show you how it can happen on both sides, but I'm not saying anybody's wrong. I see why Kawhi mm-hmm. did what he did, but I also see what San Antonio took the to fix it. You know, but when you don't have that level of communication explaining everything, mm-hmm. you know, and notice, San, I mean, I know San Antonio was trying to make the best happen, what happened, but sometimes you got to shut things down and have that conversation. Yeah, Greg Popovich, you know what? You need to, like, stop coaching for a couple of games. 
Austin Buford, you need to stop making deals. We need to really, like, find a way to have over the next couple of days during the season, have this conversation, put everything on the table. Guess what? Nobody did that. Because there's exactly. a belief in the NBA that you can't shut everything down. Like, hey, you know what? We can't break the season. Team, hey, man, look, if it's that important, and it was, and they didn't treat it that way, both sides should have shut down the season for two days and had that conversation. Make it happen. The same way Greg Popovich went out to see Kawhi, you know, the mm-hmm. same way. And, and, and I want to see the wrong way. Anyway, right. But the same way he didn't co- – and I'm trust me, I don't want to sound the wrong way. But the same way he was able to, like, shut down – when his wife passed away, and I'm not equating him at all, mm-hmm. but I'm just saying right, right. it can be done. When you decide to get something done, it can be done. And to me, this Kawhi situation with San Antonio should have taken on the magnitude that we need to get this done now and at least have some type of conversation. Shut down two days. If he's in New York, I'll see Buford, Greg, let's go to New York. We're gone. Like, what the hell is going on? Not like – you know, not all that other where his people and his people and we don't know and all that. You know, no, we're shutting it down, going out, finding what's going on. We're treating this like it's important. And I'm not putting blame on San Antonio, but when they didn't treat this with the same, you know, primary importance that, you know, it should have been treated with, you know, that's that's kind of where it all falls apart. But they felt. But I understand. I'm, I'm not. I understand why they, you know, felt the same way they did. You mm-hmm. name me one San Antonio one. Just name one San Antonio player that's been with this organization. You got something bad to say about us? One. Just name one. Exactly. No. George Gervin, Tim Duncan, Avery Johnson, David Robinson. You know, Sean Elliott. You know. Sh- I, I, I mean, look, I can go to players that we don't even know. Nobody, I cannot find one player that has anything bad to say about that. So that's what San Antonio Spurs stand on. Mike, you know, mm-hmm. Michael Moore. You know, I, man, I go Larry Kenyon and Billy Paul. I go back to the ABA days. You can't find anybody that has anything bad to say about the organization. So that's what they're standing on. A history. Like, three times as long as Kawhi Leonard been alive. So when you question us, yeah, we got a problem with it. You know what I'm saying? So I I'm, see both sides. Of it. I'm, I'm, I see both sides of it. I see both sides of it. I really do. My only issue with San Antonio is this: um, when David Robinson came out, when Bruce Bowen came out, when Mano and Tony came yep. out, I yep. think yep. that R.C. Buford and or Greg Popovich should have said, "Wait a minute, guys." We don't. We we got this covered. Instead, Pop said, "Well, you're gonna talk to his camp." And yeah, you know, but they left it. Yeah, but here's the, it goes back to my because, point. They feel guilty too. I'm saying you got to keep in mind. They're not taking. You know, there's no high road for them to take because they're like, "Look, we've been doing this." Thing. Look, man. Look, if this was the Bulls, if this was I the Knicks, but that's those. But you know what? I think that's the San Antonio way. It's none of your damn business. I, think I don't think it was the gonna, one I don't time think was, in the. I know, but I think, I don't think that's the one time in history pop would have been justified by saying, you know, not not literally none of your damn business. Professionally, we have this. This is I the one so, time that Greg th- Popovich should have said, "Okay, that's, that's you." I can't. I cannot retort to that because. We, at the end of the day, uh, when I do right by you and you and I don't feel you reciprocate, I'm up, I'm feeling some kind of way. So yeah, I cannot dispute that. Right, but we got a whole history. We, we got look, we got a whole history. We have never. No, no. Once again, this is they are so unlike no, no, any no, other no. thing. But nobody so. Yeah. No, they, no, they, they, they feel the same right. way. Look, 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 look. Wait, let me ask right, you. Let right, me ask you. I, I did fact that. Has a woman ever cheated? Has a woman ever cheated on you? Has a woman ever cheated on you? Yes. Me? Okay. Yes. I've had women cheated on me, right? We mm-hmm. regular dudes, right? We regular dudes. Ask Eric Benet if a woman's ever cheated on him. <laughs> <laughs> it's a whole other So what you're, at, you're asking Eric Benet to have the same response that you and I would for a woman cheating on him. That's saying that Tony. Like, no, exactly. we're not, this didn't happen to us. And, and you know what? I didn't. 
I didn't look at it that way. I was like, hey, man, y'all should be right. Because at the end of the day, yeah. R.C. with Greg Popovich and those guys, they're saying, we've done everything right, and it's always everything. Uh, look, how, you, we, how are we, you going to? Yeah. Exactly. Okay. Do we every oh, day, we Brad, Pitt, we Brad Pitt in this game. We are Brad Pitt in this game. Nobody cheats on us, and if they do, we got a problem. <laughs> And yeah, I get and, that. And you know what? I didn't look at it that way. Yeah, I didn't look at it that way. We are dealing with human beings and emotions, and I'm looking at it as an organization, and that's just not the way to look at it. No, not in this – especially with them, like I said, you know, and sometimes you got to break it down, like I said, to situations that human beings understand, you know, and you and I exactly. are just regular dudes out here. Women go, you know, like women go cheat on us. We ain't special. Brad Pitt and Eric Benet, they, you know, Idris Elba. Nah, man, come on. Yeah. <laughs> Ain't no woman, you know, you a damn fool to leave me. You know, to even think about that. You know who I am? You know, and San Antonio's been there for years. 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 Yeah, yeah. Understandable. You know, I've, I've had other said, women. I've, look, I've, I've, I've had ex-women back in the day come up and tell me that they upgraded. <laughs> you know wow. what I'm saying? Name me, name me, wow. name me one person that played for San Antonio that came back to the organization to tell them they upgraded. Name one. Right. Nobody. Nobody. That's my point. It the only, doesn't happen. Two upgrades. Right. It's only two upgrades. That's the Lakers and the Celtics, and that's never happened. And even at that, they probably come back and say, yeah, I'd rather play for y'all. You know what I'm saying? Everybody exactly. that plays, exactly. no, they, have, they don't do. They don't have it. Steven Jackson, who played for them twice, still is like, man, that's, you know what I'm saying? They got rid of his ass. And, and they kicked him out the door. Thank right. you, but he still, look, you talk to him about the organization, it's like he's talking about uh, a religion. You know what I'm saying? He's like, yo, this is the greatest thing ever yeah. happened in sports. Yeah. So that's my point, is yeah. that that's what they're yeah. used to. That's the culture they built, and that's what they expect. So for somebody to buck that in the moment and expect them to – once again, you, Stephen, they were acquiesced to that. I think that's naive on our part. You know what I'm saying? So I give you that long yeah. answer to say that I don't know if there's anybody wrong in this. You know, I see both sides clearly. Clearly, I see both sides. Well, I got, I got a side point. Um, San Antonio Spurs are clean. Kawhi is clean. I want to talk about is this perception or reality with Boogie Cousins? Because in my opinion, it's kind of short-sighted. Short-sighted. Mm-mm. Mm-mm. You give a 19-year-old boy this much money and expect him to be a man. Help me understand why Boogie didn't get any other offer. Okay. One, because not that much time passed. And, and, okay. and the way this free agency works and the way it has worked, let's go back to our LeBron conversation. LeBron mm-hmm. is kind of the end all be all, you know. Not that any team thought he was going to go anywhere, but a lot of teams like, oh, you know, everything revolves around LeBron, and it's the same way it did about Jordan. Everything revolves around LeBron, and you know, I don't, I don't know if Boogie Cousins, especially coming off injury, was on the map like that because everybody was really concentrating on what LeBron was going to move, and then the domino effect of that. Was he going to stay? Mm-hmm. Was he going to go? You know, the, yeah, there was a Paul George conversation. You know, but I think it still revolved at the time around LeBron. Paul George announced very fast. LeBron announced quicker than anybody ever thought. You know what I'm saying? LeBron was like, yo, okay. we saw LeBron. LeBron, historically, in the last two decisions, he played himself out. He's like waited until like July 11th or whatever. He wasn't in the single digits of July. Well, LeBron was like, here's what I'm going to do. It's like, oh, you know, so that was different. And I thought that caught everybody by surprise. That being said, is I think a lot of teams weren't focused on the month-long conversation on what's going to happen with Boogie because they're waiting to see what LeBron was going to do, and they're waiting to, like, do a rush on that. Now, the teams that could have gotten and made a pitch for Boogie, I really don't thought he was going to be available, you know, because I want you to look at it the way I looked at it in that, New Orleans made the playoffs technically without him. They challenged teams mm-hmm. and played well technically without them. 